Give and get the lowdown to supersize and grow your business. Sharon Hornell from here. Our communication related idiom for today is to give someone the lowdown on something or someone else or to get the lowdown on someone or something else. Lowdown, this one, uh, this particular idiom and use of lowdown emerged in the early 1900s and it meant that it was used, the lowdown was used to describe something that was confidential or private facts or privy information in some way, shape, or form. It's probably related to its much older uh, bottom, get to the bottom of something, which actually appeared in the 1700s, so actually the 1600s, the 17th century. And lowdown dates back to the 1540s, and then in 1888, it came to mean something vulgar or far down on a social scale or something. So it's got a, a pretty colorful history, but basically it means the real and unabandoned, unabridged information, true secret information or facts about something or someone. The inside real truth, the real truth, right? The authentic real story, uh, which is really funny when I think of the online world and how much marketing and and twisting is done to everyone's stories as they appear online. Very few people share the real authentic story of how they developed or, or grew their business and what happened along the way. There's always the marketing version of the story and the events, and, and as it should be because it helps to change people's beliefs and make them see it's possible for them, etc. But I think of this idiom and expression, I think of 411, the information. We need to get the information that we need to run and grow and build and supersize our business. But we also need to think about the information that we give and we provide to help the people that are helping us to grow and build and supersize our business. I was talking to one of my consultants this morning and he's working with a business owner who is super duper frustrated because the people that he has as managers in his organization aren't taking on some of the responsibilities and some of the things he put them in the positions that they're in it and put them on salary to do, to take some of the workload off of him. And uh, my, my consultants found that uh, the problem isn't the people, it's there's no systems in place that the, pers the business owner can pass on to the people that he wants to take the responsibility. They're all very manual, very labor intensive systems that he's been, the owner's been doing himself and he needs to create systems that he can then delegate to the different supervisors of the different divisions that he has, et cetera. I'm trying to make a simple explanation for a very complicated situation in a very complicated industry. But our discussion this morning was about every industry, and I've been involved in a lot of them, dozens and dozens of them. Uh, every industry has its insider secrets. They have things that they do really, really well and frankly, they have things that they do really, really badly, but they're so busy doing the things that they do well and compensating for the things that they do badly that there's never anyone in the organization, for the most part, that's looking at the things that they don't do well, that if they were to, to improve those a little bit, it would have a huge impact on their business. So that was our fun discussion this morning. And it's true of every industry. Every single industry, every business that I've ever been involved in or been a part of or had a discussion with it's, it's easy for someone like me and for my consultant as an outsider that can see the big picture to come in and look and say, oh my gosh, if you just tweak this one thing, it will have a huge difference on your results. And it will have, a, it's like you look for, I always go in and I look for the bottlenecks. And once I look at the bottlenecks, I look for places that we can have a huge impact by making little changes. Because a lot of people believe that they have to make massive changes in their business and their organization in order to have a huge result. But it's like using a lever. We can lift a huge weight with a little lever if it's set up right and put in the right position. The same is true with coming into our businesses and looking at the information. We can make an, a massive difference by just tweaking a few things. And it's usually just one or two steps in a process that already exists that need to be improved thought about because sometimes they've never even been considered or uh, automated, but you can't automate something until you have a system for it. Until you understand the process, you can't automate the process. You can automate inefficiency and chaos. Guess what you're going to get? A lot more inefficiency and chaos. So 
it was really a fun topic this morning. So I like to apply frameworks when I'm looking at complicated situations. And one of the things I like to apply when it comes to giving and getting the lowdown is what are, I use the journalistic framework, who, what, where, when, why, and how do we need to look at this situation and understand it? And then I also am, am pretty good at processes, so I will do process analysis and audits on everything I'm involved in because I know that every industry has their things that can be tweaked to make a massive difference in their results. Uh, and that's why we look at KPIs and, and measures and things like that. That is my discussion of give and get the lowdown today. I'd love to know if you've had this experience, if you've had experience with this idiom, if you've used it. I'm trying to think if I've, I probably have said, hey, what's the lowdown on this? Or give me the lowdown on this person or that situation or tell me about. I probably more often say, tell me about the thing I want to know about than say, ah, give me the lowdown. But I like the expression. I think it's kind of fun. It reminds me of Westerns for some reason. No idea why. All right, if I can help you anyway, hit me up. If there's a communication-related idiom you would love to know, what does it mean, where does it come from, and how can we apply it to our businesses to grow and build and supersize them today, ask. Otherwise, I will pick another one for tomorrow off my list of communication-related idioms because beginning of each month when we're going into a new topic, I brainstorm a huge list of them, and I research a huge list of them, and I just randomly pick one every day, and we talk about it. That's why we talk about some of the weird ones we talk about when we do. All right, have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.